Hey, I'm just checking my laptop to see if it's charged. Oh no, there's no power. Well, I think I found out what the problem is. Somebody turned off the light switch. In this house, the light switch doesn't operate the light. It operates an electrical outlet and only the bottom one. So let's flip this on and see if we get power. We got power. I think we need to fix this. One way to do that, I think we need to change that plug and how it operates. This lets us know that power is applied to the circuit and that the tester works correctly. Now let's go turn off power at the fuse box. We can now see that power is no longer applied to the circuit and is safe to work on. Okay, just to cover things a little bit, up here on the left, this is the two wire pair that's going over to the switch. There's two wires on this side and that's basically the daisy chaining of one part of the house coming to here and then it extending to another part of the house, most likely in this bedroom, on the next electrical outlet. So at this point we're going to deconstruct this outlet and put in a brand new one that has features such as USB. One thing of note, while this is the common side of the ground, what makes this a split circuit is usually there's a tab that connects these two so power is the same, meaning it flows through as if it was one piece, because it basically is. When you take the tab off, that's what allows you to have a split circuit so that they can operate independently of each other. So now it's time to tear this thing apart. So one thing I do want to change is because they were using a split outlet that led to a, a switch uh, due to the contractors going through so fast or whatever, they decided to combine the two wire white lead to the hot lead side. Now they electrically put it together correctly, however for safety's fact I'd like to take the gray wire, put it back with the gray so that gray will always mean hot lead. So that when I go back to the switch and change it for an outlet, it will also be gray there, thus being a hot lead and the white remaining a common. So this one will get bundled with these and then this one will get bundled with the gray here. All right, it's time to tie in all the common and the hot leaves with these grommets you just line them all up next to each other as 
best as you can. The cables are pretty stiff, so this can be a little bit difficult at times. Let's put the grommet in. You want it snug, but not too tight because otherwise the spring inside will break. Now let's do the hot lead. These were kind of banded together before. I'm just adding on. on a few conductors see if any slip out if not they're pretty good and when you tuck these in you're gonna want to bend it so that it goes diagonal to one corner folds back so that this can rest in and go flush but before I do that it's time to install the one up where the switch used to be Okay, we're going to fish out the ground wire so that we can attach that to our new outlet. It looks like these were crimped in, so we'll make a simple cut. Now we just want to attach the conductors. You always want the hook part of the conductor to go clockwise so that when you tighten it, it tightens correctly with the loop. Otherwise it will undo it and probably push the wire out anyways. The way I was taught, White with silver, and the gray with gold. A little more similar of colors, and then G with gray and G with gold. Makes it a little bit simple for me to remember. Try to do this so that it's a little easier for you to see. Put it in the box. Again, push to one far corner. Like that. So that it fits on like that. Now, when you're screwing down these, don't just screw and push them all in. You want to push this in and screw the screw independently. The reason you do this is the part you're screwing in, it's just going into a little plastic piece very often in these boxes. And if it's tight fitting, if you're only using the screw like this and it's too tight, it has a chance of stripping out that plastic piece. Now at this point, we could dress it up, put the, the face plate on, but good habit is make sure everything works before you dress it up. So we're gonna do the same that we did right here over at the other outlet. Then we're gonna turn on power, make sure everything works, checks out correctly. Then we'll dress everything up. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little bit different. The other one only had a two wire. This has got three two wires in here. So we're gonna have to really make sure we bend them in as 
as best as we can using up all the space. If you remember what I said before, see how much pressure that is? If I just use the screws going into these plastic pieces, it would strip them out. All right, so let's button this up. Pushing on the electrical outlet with my finger. Looking pretty good. Okay, let's test the circuit. We should be expecting two yellow lights. We're good there. We're good on the top. Okay, check the bottom. We're good. We're good there as well. All right, let's dress it up. Looking great. Now time for the final face plate. So now I have my laptop and my iPad all plugged in. So we come up, got power on the laptop, iPad's going. Plenty of access for anything I want in the future. See, that wasn't so hard. A few tools, a little bit of materials, they didn't really cost all that much. In about 15 minutes of your time, this job is pretty quick and easy. So stick around next time, we'll tackle another job. Bye.